uh, AI is not going to make you less productive. It will make you more productive if you choose to do so. AI has infinite patience. They will not give up. They will keep nudging the student, helping the student to think differently. I don't see a scenario, at least right now, where you can have a learning journey with just AI and no human facilitator. A lot of the abuse of digital tools happens at home. So the parents play a critical role. Now you're also making impact in another big area, which is the one that everybody's talking about, which is AI and education. So how do you see AI really impacting education? Because there's a fear, because of course you've seen the new announcement, CBSC has announced from grade three on, AI to be introduced in all classrooms, but you guys have already introduced it. Yeah. So talk, talk us through this. A bit. Yeah, I think there is, AI is coming and it needs to come, but it needs to be used for the right things. It needs to be uh, used for solving problems, very specific problems. And to me, one of the problems we are trying to solve for using AI is um, the lack of access to uh, world-class quality education. And AI helps there in so many different ways. Number one, there are schools in our country, um, you know, 67% of our uh, student population in the country attend government schools. The teacher availability is not always there. Uh, good quality teachers may not always be there. So then what happens to the students' uh, access to education? So that's where AI steps in because it provides that personalized education to a student where they can learn anything at any time, any place, uh, based on their preferred style of learning. Um, so that's number one. Uh, and lack of a school uh, availability or lack of a good teacher availability uh, becomes less relevant. So I think that's, that, that's the first, which is just solving for that access problem. Second is the, the effectiveness of education, the quality of education, the way you're being uh, taught. Uh, is more personalized, uh, which AI does. Um, and AI is uh, providing that personalized tutor to a student, but it's also providing uh, dental assistance um, to a teacher. Uh, so AI, AI can be used by teachers. It can be used by administrators too. So AI can be used at various levels in any schooling system and uh, to bring about effective change uh, in our learning outcomes at a population level scale. So we are bringing in AI for, uh, you know, in a in our government's school setup um, through uh, doing pilots in UP and Odisha. And now we're doing a large scale pilot in Karnataka. And uh, the governments are very supportive and uh, they are forward thinking, very innovative. Uh, they are uh, you know, bringing in this AI access to their students uh, to, get a, to get around these issues that, uh, that I spoke about. So AI is very important. And it it is, I see that as one of the best ways to solve for the education of our youth, in, at least in schooling. And of course, of, even after that, but we are focused on schooling uh, because we talk about demographic, demographic dividends uh, and we are doing skilling and whatnot. Uh, but that's a band-aid when the problem is upstream. The problem is really during school years. We're trying to solve for something which didn't get solved for during school years. So, uh, and to really make education effective in schooling years, you need AI just because of the size of our sector. It's so diverse, it's so heterogeneous. Students are in remote areas, they don't have access to things, but what they do have access to is a device. You know, device penetration in our country luckily is good. Band, you know, and uh, if you can produce an AI uh, tool which does not require too much bandwidth, can be ac accessed on a mobile phone and can allow a safe um, access to uh, education for a, for a child, for a student, nothing like it. Now, Swati, there's the flip side. A lot of people are concerned. Is it really going to dumb down? Meaning, is it really giving us the skills, especially a lot of debate of this happened even in the COVID times, that online education versus offline education, are you able to get the same level of skill? And now with AI, are you able to get or learn the same amount? Or are we really dumbing down the next generation of population? Yeah. See, the, I mean, a good analogy that I'll draw is um, when PDAs came up, right? Uh, personal device assistants, uh, digital assistants, or digital calendars. You no longer had to remember telephone numbers. Yes. Right? We no, no longer had to remember events and dates of what's happening on which day. And you would just use digital. 
what what has that done to us? Most of us cannot cannot remember three we different telephone numbers, remember. right? Telephone more num numbers. More than two numbers. Has it dumbed us down? One could argue yes, but at the but same time, what are we using our time for? Do we really need to remember numbers? Do we need really need to memorize events? Uh, you know, when what is happening when? Or is our time better used to make decisions and prior you know prioritize things? Um, which is using a prefrontal cortex. I think that is a better use of our time than to memorize numbers. So I think it's the, there's a shift in the, uh, which part of the brain you're using more, right? I think, uh, so there's a bit of that happening, uh, which to me is not a bad thing, I could argue. So AI is no different. Uh, AI is not gonna make you less productive. It'll make you more productive if you choose to do so. You can do, you don't have to do the same with less. You can do more with the same. Right, that's another way to look at it. Uh, but coming back to your original question that is AI dumbing down students and learning, I would say it depends on the tool. If the tool is, manif is, is made well, if an AI tool uh, takes into account privacy for a student, uh, data privacy for a student, uh, safety for a student, and is Socratic in nature, which basically means that it doesn't give out the answer and engages the student in that productive struggle, then that's what causes learning. I be bored kind of. A yeah, it pushes the child to think, to think a little deeper, think a bit more and doesn't give in easily, which a human tutor might actually give in after a point, right? <laughs> because they lose patience. Yeah. But AI has infinite patience. They will not give up. They will keep nudging the student, helping the student to think differently, uh, breaking down the problem in smaller parts and doing it in different different ways that the student is still not getting it without losing patience. To me, that is where the learning is going to come from. So to me, it's I think it's better than even a human tutor right. if it's designed well. I think education is a safe sector also, and it's like it it can't be misused as much as much as it is it can be misused if it is governed well. Yeah, and well, I've been fascinated. I don't know if you've been following this Alpha Schools. You know, very fascinating. They're saying they're getting outcomes 3x, 4x. So is this true? <laughs> I'm asking from a personal perspective. Yeah. Because, you know, it's like the type of numbers. It's the first AI for school. And they're growing like crazy. And I think, I mean, they're, of course, on the YouTube. And they show up on my feed all the time. Maybe I'm too obsessed about this topic. But are you seeing those kind of outcomes? Because the type of outcomes they're doing, yeah. that students using AI have been 3x or 4x faster than mm. the experience. I think it's a little too early to say, uh, but I do expect the learning outcomes to go up. Uh, I think that you, it's, it's a little premature to say that right now because the AI tools are just coming in uh, at a large enough scale to matter. They might be getting piloted here and there at a small scale, which you can't really judge learning outcomes, uh, the effect on learning outcomes based on those small, small, uh, you know, pilots here and there because they might be true for that pilot, but are they scalable? Uh, does that effect apply to other use cases? That's not really certain. So you, plus it, it's a learned behavior. Just like it takes us some time to learn how to use a new gadget, right? Uh, it will take us some time to learn how to use AI tools. Chat GPT is out there. How many of us are using it on a daily basis? That's great. <laughs> that's great. Right? So, but I'm sure that that share of population that's using it on a daily basis is not, is not so high. Even though it's available, anybody can use it because people sometimes don't know how to use it. Where do I use it? It takes you a while to get to that point. It's a behavior change. Absolutely. Right? To acquire any tutor, I mean, any tool uh, and, and embed it into your day-to-day -day yeah, working day -day and day-to-day, -day, uh, your day-to-day -day life. Uh, I think same is true for AI tutors, for students as well. It will take some time uh, to learn how to do prompting, how do I engage with the tutor, and, and to get comfortable with it, to assume that it, I'm talking to a human being, right? Because that also takes some time to develop, that comfort level. So AI in education, how are you looking at physical spaces? Because the, the uh, topmost worry is the interaction, engagement, loneliness, yeah. uh, that is going to be... Yeah. Far lesser. No, you're, you're very right. Uh, and that's an important one to design around, which is why I say the implementation is just as important, if not more important than the design of the tool. Right. And this is where that example comes yeah. in. You, you've designed a great AI tool, but are you going to use it to replace what's existing? Are you going to take the children out of the classroom completely, remove the teacher, remove any ad adult? 
and say just sit down with the screen and just learn Can on imagine your own. Twenty kids sitting with yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, in their own I think dark a, rooms or rooms. I think that's or, a dangerous uh, yeah. pheno phenomena, which is why uh, we believe that there is a very good space, time, and value for both AI learning by yourself and online learning for that matter. and offline learning you learn a lot through peer to peer you know through peer interactions and interpersonal skills get built you build 21st century skill sets of you know critic you know yes you will learn some critical thinking or reasoning logical reasoning skills through ai but you also need to learn how to navigate human dynamics human organizations how to influence how to negotiate um how to um think in a design thinking manner all those are important skills to be developed for a human being um executive thinking skills uh prefrontal cortex development all of that requires human interaction so there is a absolute place and time for a teacher for a or a facilitator i would use the word a learning facilitator to be there uh, the teachers need to be the today's teachers need to be a part of that learning journey for a student they play the role of a facilitator their role changes a little bit instead of you know just passing on facts to the child for them to memorize which no longer needs to be done they can now spend time being a coach be a mentor um, uh, to the student be behavioral uh, learning be, behavioral learning um, inspire the children to learn help clear doubts uh, or be there for mental and social uh, um, health uh, evolution for the child uh, because you also have social emotional development that's needed in addition to academic development so you need human interaction for that and you need somebody to facilitate those in a safe manner so again there is i don't see a scenario at least right now where you can have a learning journey with just ai and no human facilitator i don't see that so and we as a mix. yeah so we design our programs with the teacher at the center of of it all of the learning journey and be the fulcrum of that equation any tips for parents because this is the hottest conversation mm -hmm. <laughs> that is out there yeah. two conversations yeah kids that are going to college and kids that are going to school people are torn i mean how much device time is this really going to be effective or not and then people that are going to college people are worried ab kya padhai what should they study what are the careers mm. it's an interesting one uh, for parents of school going kids i would say the first thing they need to do is make themselves aware they need to be aware of what ai tutors are all about how they can be used how they can be abused if and how to um pick the right tutor for your child i think that's very important and to be able to keep their supervision on on what are they using the online device that the device is for are they using it for learning are they using it for some untoward activities i think the parent needs to be a very strong uh, you know they play a very important role now in that uh, learning journey outside of the classroom as well and a lot of the abuse happens of of digital uh, source uh, tools happens at home yeah. you know based on the information that's uh, available so the parents play a critical role so parents can no longer just stay hands off they have to now learn what it is all about and be a part of the, their child's learning journey Uh, so that's number one. Uh, in terms of college and what do we learn, um, I think that is still evolving. But one thing is very clear that a lot of colleges are outdating themselves. They really need to up their game. They really need to uh, evolve their teaching practices and what they teach. And a lot of the uh, spaces, uh, and to me, colleges are just spaces because learning is no longer restricted to a uh, college. Right? Learning happens. of college on college on campus off campus at home in classroom out everywhere it's seamless across uh, in your life right so which is why i use the word space so the value of these spaces where such as colleges or schools is really about bringing people together and creating communities learning communities of students um and putting those adults and younger ones together uh, and taking age out of the equation helping everybody learn at their level regardless of their age regardless of uh, their um, and helping them learn what they want to learn also right so be able to cater and customize learning to each student i think that's what needs to happen in colleges uh, second a lot of application orientation needs to be brought in into the education system and that's why colleges and schools because they have a physical space where they bring people together yes. they can facilitate that 
Uh, so you've learned something online, you've learned something through your AI. Now let's have projects where you apply it. So more hands-on work, more project work, more application, that can happen in these physical spaces. But to me, learning really does need to break the walls now. It needs to go, it can't just be restricted to colleges. Uh, and careers, wow, I would say let each child, let each student pick their own career, depending on what they really are passionate about, what they want to learn, uh, and let them make a career out of what they, what they uh, you know, enjoy doing. You know, in our generation, we didn't have that uh, luxury. Yeah, there but three careers. But in, yeah, <laughs> but in the case of AI, you can. And in today's day and age, you can. A student can. Uh, because uh, learning can be that customized now. So there should not be any, the, these six fields, uh, you know, or areas of study and everybody has to slot themselves into each. No, let each student be the, the unit, yeah. right? And let the learning come to the student and customize itself to the student rather than, no, these are the set fields and let the students, you know, come and slot themselves into these fields. No, we need to flip it completely. That's what very exciting. Yeah. yeah. Exciting, yeah. exciting times. Exciting times, yeah, yeah. And Era not, of learn, unlearning, learning and relearning. It's yeah, like very exactly true. how well much said. horizon is bigger. You can just think of, I want to do this, you can do that. Yeah. I want to learn this, you can learn that. It's so it's true. A, you're so empowered a, as a learner now. You don't, you're not dependent on let me go and do a summer course. It's just that you want to learn anything, it's right here. It's right here. I, the only thing it needs regulation. Yeah. Watch. Yeah, it does need regulation uh, to make sure that it is uh, being utilized the right way, in a safe, uh, you know, and, 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 and to make sure that the tools that are being utilized, uh, that are being brought in are responsibly tested, you know, ethically created, uh, thoughtfully designed, uh, and with safety of the child in mind, security of the child, data security, data privacy, all of those things need to be kept in mind uh, as well. So and all of that requires regulation. Thank you, Swati. No, thank you. Thank you so much for uh, engaging in those really interesting conversations and uh, on some of the favorite topics. Mm -hmm.